Hey there, Lick and Riffers, and welcome back to yet another awesome fingerstyle lesson here on Lick and Riff, in which I'm going to help you take control of your thumb picking by adding solos to your chords. Okay, we're going to add little solo licks underneath our chords. Okay, it's not on top because on top means the high notes. I mean solos below the chord. Okay, bass solos using your thumb. So in this little mini series of lessons, in this the first lesson, we're gonna start with the very very basics. Okay, we're gonna play bass solos over one chord. And in the next videos, we're gonna take chord progressions and I'm gonna show you how you can utilize your new knowledge to add bass solos to those progressions. So let's start with A major. Now you can put A major in one of two ways. You can bar the second fret, okay? or you can put your fingers on, okay? Different fingers. So both of the, uh, the approaches, okay, for the A chord, both approaches provide different approaches for soloing on the bass scale, okay? So the scale is zero to four on strings E and A, okay? Play that and then play A and you'll see that it's, it fits. Okay, but you also have the third fret if you want a little bit of blues. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the barred shape. Okay, we're gonna start with the barred shape because it's easier. So the barred shape, okay, strings two, three, four, and five give us an A chord uh, by barring the second fret, right? So um, immediately you see that you have your the rest of your finger is free for soloing. So you can immediately start with okay, zero and four. Just try different things and then play the A chord. Okay, You can do zero, four on the sixth string and then play A. You can do the same thing on A. Okay? You can pull off. Okay? You can pull off four to zero and then play the chord. You can play four to zero on the uh, E bass string, okay, and then play the A chord, and then you have A over E, which is fine, okay. But you can do the pull off and then play the A chord with the fifth string. You can do this, okay, pull off, and then the A. Yeah, I played it up, exaggerated on purpose, okay, so you could hear the A bass. So, okay, and then you get a, sort of a, a country lick. Okay? Because you get da -da -da instead of just okay? instead of having a classical style counterpoint where you have the bass line and then you have the rest of the chord. So it gives you different options. But if you play three and four, okay, you have three and four on the sixth rank, and then you play A, you get a bluesy sound. The same goes for the A string. Okay, you have three, four, and then A. So you can take that knowledge and start noodling around with it. It's pretty simple if you think about it. No matter what you play, you can add solos. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be... Okay, it doesn't have to be Travis picking. You can play... You can just pull off the three or pull off the four. You can do. Okay, you can even play E at the end there because A over E is fine. But this isn't very interesting, right? Because you need the rest of the scale. If you repeat the same pattern all the time, it's not very musical. So what you can do is you can add two on the on both strings E and A but when you do it with the barred version you need to either let go of the chord which we don't want because we want to keep the chord ringing or you can use the second finger okay which is uncomfortable but it's a valid technique Okay? 
So when you add two to the barred version of A, it becomes a little bit inconvenient. But um, adding solos to chords is pretty advanced finger style. So it's not a matter of convenience, it's a matter of getting used to it. So you can do anything you want. You can do zero two on both E and A. Okay? You can hammer on. Play a little lick every time. You don't even have to play a full lick. You can just change the notes. As long as you finish on A, everything is fine. Okay, so. Now, I let go of the chord. That's also valid. You can let go of the chord and play a solo, as long as you immediately put the chord back on. Okay, four, two, zero. That's all I did. Right? So it's more of a technical challenge than a real melodic challenge um, because everything you do fits, okay? Zero, two, three, four. You can even do that. You can do four, three, two, zero. What happens when you put the whole chord on, okay? Instead of just barring, when you put all your fingers down. Um, using your little finger to play four becomes a little bit inconvenient, but you're gonna have to do it if you want, okay? But playing two becomes easier. You just let go of the little, of the, of the four finger. Okay? And also playing three becomes a little bit easier with your little finger. Okay, three and zero gives you a blue scale. So this is your very first step. This is what you need to take control of when you want to add uh, bass solos to your finger picking. Because adding bass solos to your finger picking when you want to uh, do all this with a full chord progression becomes a lot more challenging if you don't have this down. You need to have this down. So just try all the combinations that you can think of. Okay? Don't worry about playing clean. Don't worry about, uh, about it being melodically beautiful. It's just a technical exercise. Now, remember, you want to leave the A chord on so the notes can ring. Okay? You don't want okay? you don't want it to be separate all the time. You want to create separation sometimes, but most of the time you want to let the notes ring. Okay? Now playing Okay, playing two and three with your forefinger and your little finger might be a new experience to most of you, okay? So this is something really, really cool to, uh, to have down, okay? This is a really cool technique to know. Because it looks really cool when you look at it and you don't know what's going on. Wow, they're using their little finger. Okay, this looks like a really complicated chord when you're playing it around and you don't know guitar. Okay, when you watch someone do it and you don't exactly know what's going on. Okay, but it's actually just an A chord. Okay, so try as many combinations of this as possible. And in the next video, in this little mini series, we're gonna take a chord progression and I'm gonna show you what you can do there. So thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and uh, I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now, enjoy.